pick up of the last lecture. So we, uh, so we consider it a modular tensor category. If we construct it, uh, so given a modular tensor category, we construct it as three-dimensional TQFT. And so in particular, what we did is, uh, so we defined what is the value uh, of this functor on some genus G Riemann surface. Some explicit expression in terms of homes between objects, between, between some combination of simple objects in this model tensor category. And then we also, uh, by explicit formula, uh, we defined uh, the value on some uh, uh, cobordism between, Riemann, between uh, two Riemann surfaces. And uh, the idea of this is was uh, Actually, two, two, so since it's a functor between some spaces, it's a, uh, since, since it's, it's, a, it's, it's a map between some vector spaces, we just pair it uh, between the corresponding elements. Uh, and uh, this pairing uh, corresponds to a closure, to a certain closure, to a certain canonical closure of this manifold. So we obtain a, a, a certain Close three-dimensional manifold, but with uh, certain coupons embedded, and the coupons are allowed by the element of the vector spaces associated with the boundary. And this is closed. Uh, any closed uh, three-manifold with these coupons embedded can be understood as a dense surgery on a certain link in a, a three uh, together with those coupons. So the coupons and the link can interlink with each other. And the formula was essentially the generalization of the formula for the WRT invariant. So in particular, let me make the following remarks. So the remark number one is that, uh, 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 so if I take, uh, so if I want uh, to recover my WRT invariant on a closed three manifold, so this is given by this general construction where C, so there are two ways to, under, to kind of understand the C, at least, uh, is, uh, uh, so let me write it in words, as a category of uh, finite uh, dimensional representations. So there is a, some fine print to it. Uh, some, some, some extra subtle condition, fine dimensional representations of uh, quantum SL2. So this is a, at uh, Q equals 2 pi i divided by K. So this is some Hopf algebra. And uh, so it's important that the, 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 uh, the representation theory of this Hopf algebra is, is, is very different for uh, generic Q and Q is to And uh, so, in particular, well, but there, there is a simple way to understand simple, the, the, the objects, the, the simple objects uh, uh, in this uh, category. So as a set, this can be identified with uh, just representations of uh, SL2 uh, of dimensions uh, one, two, till k minus one. But of course, there is, no, there is some non-trivial uh, uh, tensor product. Now the tensor product will be modified, and uh, we have to put all others, some non-trivial, uh, some non-trivial, this MTC structure on this, uh, on those objects. So, uh, so in particular, uh, so what, how, how does the, the generic MTC data is expressed in this case. So, uh, so in particular, this quantum dimensions, there will be just uh, 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 the quantum numbers. And uh, so here, I, I, again, I label my simple objects by just numbers from one to k minus one, which, represent, which correspond to the dimensions. And for example, S matrix, uh, these unnormalized S matrix, is just uh, so it's a value of uh, 
it's, it's, it's a color regions polynomial of my hop flink. Like this, or maybe, and uh, and so on. Of course, there are also some air matrix and so on, which one can work. So the remark number. Uh, so, but the other an, another way to uh, understand this category is this uh, category can be understood as a category of uh, what is called integrable. representations of uh, a fine Lie algebra SU2 at level K. Okay. I, I would say I would say this. Because this is, a, I mean, this is kind of a, so this general, more general understanding. You can understand uh, this uh, C as a, uh, as a, some model, as, as a category of uh, modules of some vertex operator algebra. And the vertex operator algebra is what describes you the chiral conformal field theory, which lives on the boundary of, uh, of the three dimensional QQFT. It's kind of this empty, in, in, term, in, in terms of uh, kind of this ra rational conformal field theory, this MTC structure was actually constructed uh, by, kind of described by Greg in, in the paper by Moore and Zyberg. Yes, thank you. Yes. Okay. So another remark, uh, uh, so, we do, so here we, by this formula, we define the value on this bordism, but we, did, we haven't checked actually if the, if, the, if the gluing of bordism corresponds to a composition of maps. And one of, if one does this, one actually uh, comes to some sort of difficulty. So, uh, uh, so the gluing is uh, functorial uh, only up to a face, uh, the face which is uh, uh, it's in the general has some 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 some, some power of uh, a certain ratio, where this ratio these uh, numbers in terms of MTC data are defined as follows, and. Uh, so this phase, this kind of uh, the extra phase. So which means when we compose, when we, when we can see the composition of uh, bordisms, uh, we get a we get a corresponding composition of uh, linear maps, but up to an overall phase. But and this uh, this is a, a kind of the extra phase is correspond to what is uh, often called as framing anomaly. And uh, so this can be cured. Uh, by uh, considering instead this uh, ZC as a functor from the category of not the, not the ordinary bordism, but the category of framed bordisms. And so, for, which means for each uh, for each uh, three manifold, you need to specify framing, and here by framing is uh, is a choice of uh, trivialization of uh, uh, the the uh, direct sum of two copies of tangent bundle. But in, of course, in certain cases, when this ratio is one, then, it's, uh, it, then it defines a pure uh, TQFT, uh, the, the ordinance really TQFT. So for, if you consider closed three manifolds, then there are actually some canonical choice of framing, and that's for actually, when there's actually one can define this WRT invariant, it's just an invariant of three manifolds, not frame manifolds. But once we, we want to start gluing those guys, we need to keep track of framing. But the dependence of framing is very, is very simple, it's just uh, Overall phase. That's for the objects and the morphisms. That's what the data. 
Uh, yes, uh, yes. So for yes, so for all of them, we need to to do. This. Capital T. Oh well, this is uh, I defined this in the, in the previous like in the previous lecture. So if I consider the following part of the diagram, where I label this strand by simple object I, this is uh, the same as the the the, the uh, just a strand without this uh, loop multiplied by ti. Uh, okay, and. Uh, so the final remark which I want to make is that uh, uh, so this construction uh, 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 well, let me write it uh, this way. So an MTC C actually defines uh, what is called three to one extended TPFT, uh, which can be understood as a functor uh, between the following uh, two categories. Uh, so this is a, so the right hand side is a two category where the, uh, the, the objects are linear categories and uh, so the, uh, uh, the, the and uh, the, the, the one morph the, the, uh, the one morphisms are functors between them and uh, uh, well, the the, uh, the two morphisms are natural transformations, and here so the the objects are one manifolds, which is just a bunch of circles, and so the uh, the one morphisms between the objects are kind of two-dimensional bordisms. So these are kind of Riemann surfaces with boundaries, and then the uh, the, the two morphisms are. A bordisms uh, between uh, these two manifolds with boundaries, which can be sort of manifolds with corners. Okay. And so, in particular, so this uh, as this uh, two, uh, two category, uh, the functor between two categories, so the value on the empty one manifold is just. Uh, uh, it's just a easy, easy category of vector spaces and the value on the S1 is uh, the category C itself. So now I want to change the topic a little bit, but are there any questions so far? Yeah, this is more or less in like those guys are more or less in one to one correspondence between them. Yeah. Yes? Well, I guess this is for some standard uh, okay. lingual framing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm ready to say what is the. 
what is the dependency in framing here. I think, uh, oh, to zero. I guess, uh, yes, but, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not I, I don't know, but I think yes, but I don't know what is it. I don't remember what is this question. <laughs> I mean, roughly speaking, is, uh, is, is closely related to this uh, framing anomaly. So, uh, so we started, uh, so at some point we mentioned that there is a, uh, uh, there is a following uh, kind of pass integral realization of the double H invariant, which uh, is written like this. And uh, uh, so the integral over all connections on, uh, uh, so SU2 connections on M3 modular gauge transformations. And so what, so this is ill-defined, but can we, can we learn something from this? Can we learn something precise from this? And uh, so in particular, can we, uh, so this has a, a very particular, so the integral has a very particular dependence on K, and one can wonder, wonder if we can, can, le can learn something about what is the dependence. So in principle, this invariant is defined for integer K, but is there some nice uh, analytic properties of this integral with respect to K? And uh, so we know, for example, that if you have a, a, some just ordinary integral of this form, so the asymptotic expansion, so the, the behavior, so asymptotics at uh, k goes to infinity is uh, determined uh, by a behavior around uh, critical points of f. So can we make, can we uh, use this kind of finite dimensional intuition to make some conjecture about the double RT invariant? And indeed this is uh, the case. So it was, can be, it's usually referred as asymptotic uh, expansion conjecture. Uh, so this is, uh, can be attributed uh, to Witten. And uh, there are also many other people who participated. In particular, the moment psychomatic approach was kind of formulated by Anderson. Uh, so the conjecture says that. Well, I think he mentioned this already in this uh, Jones quantum field theory and Jones polynomial. But I think more, like more mathematically precise, it was formulated by Anders. And, uh, so the statement that uh, this has, uh, uh, so asymptotics of double uh, routine variant has uh, the following form. Uh, sorry. OK. 
Okay. So before, okay, sorry, before formulating this, uh, uh, well, okay, let me write it first and then I explain the notations. So there will be some where alpha runs over a certain set. So this will be a finite set and uh, So I explain what it is. So this is a model is as the, for the, the set of connected components of the model space of SU2 flat connections on M3. So let me explain the various ingredients here. Uh, so first, first of all is, uh, uh, so the critical points of uh, this John Simons uh, functional are flat connections. So, so one can check, it's easy to check that the, this, the, the equation which tells you the variation of Stern Simons functional with respect to connection one form is equivalent to the condition that the curvature uh, the curvature is zero. And uh, So the, uh, the set of critical points uh, modular gauge transformations is, uh, so, so by definition it's a set of uh, connections A with flatness condition divided by gauge transformations. And but this can be, uh, so this is in, even though we consider uh, some critical points in some infinite dimensional space, the, uh, this, se this uh, set and it's a, is, uh, is some, is a, sorry, the space, uh, space of solutions, model of gauge transformation is a uh, finite dimension. And it can be explicitly described as follows, as a space of homes from pi one, from the fundamental group of M3, to uh, uh, SU2 divided by conjugate action of SU2. And the correspondence is given as follows. So uh, if, I, if I have a, a some, a some connection, some, some flat connection A, uh, then I need to construct this home and the home is given by, so if I, if I, if I take a, a, some element of pi one represented by, by some uh, cycle gamma, I map it to the holonomy of uh, my connection A uh, around gamma. And of course, uh, uh, the, the, if, if I, when, once I do a gauge transformation here, uh, the holonomy changes by a conjugate action of the, so see here I need to choose a base point, and uh, so the, gauge, the, uh, the action of the gauge transformation at this base point will, will give me a conjugate action on this holonomy. Okay. Uh, so this is, uh, so this, by definition, is uh, my space M flat SU2 of M3. And 
and it has uh, it has a it has a finite number of connected components. So this is a finite set. So this is a kind of a, a weak form of this conjecture. So the conjecture just says that there is the asymptotic expansion is of this form, where the uh, kind of uh, the sum. Of, uh, so, so the, the asymptotic is determined by the sum of terms. Each term has exponential uh, with respect to k behavior determined by the value of the Chern-Simons functional on, uh, on, on, any, on any connection uh, from this uh, component, because of course the value of the Chern-Simons functional on any, on, any, uh, on any connection from the same, from the same connected component is, is the same. It just follows uh, from uh, this equation, and uh, and then there are also some expansion uh, with respect to one over k. K is the, is the level with some uh, beginning power, and then there are also there are also a kind of stronger version of this uh, conjecture that those coefficients are not uh, can be actually independently defined. So this. Uh, uh, so the uh, the coefficients a alpha n are what is called as a, uh, are called uh, perturbative invariants of M three. And uh, so they can be independently, uh, so, uh, so they can, can be defined under certain assumptions. Uh, in terms of uh, certain counting of uh, trivalent <coughs> graphs in M3. So in physics, this trivalent graph corresponds to some sort of Feynman diagrams. And by counting means integrating over vertices of those graphs uh, with some particular weights. So this has been uh, uh, kind of on the mathematical level of rigor. This was con considered by Kantsevich. Uh, so this is a work of in, in the 90s, and then uh, also bought Catania and uh, uh, Axel Rod Singer. Okay. No, they define they define this count. They didn't show this. They, they, define, they just define those guys independently. And then you can make a stronger conjecture that those are the same guys which those, those they, they define. And, and the nature of the assumption, is things like the critical points are isolated or something? Well, uh, one of the conditions, so one, one good, 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 good condition is a trivial flat connection in the rational homology sphere. Another good condition is that uh, the, the flat connection is what is called acyclic. So the corresponding differential is has trivial uh, cohomology. So in particular, yeah, you want uh, isolated. And uh, but uh, so this, uh, of course, but this 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 uh, count is in practice uh, very hard to implement. But there is there is a kind of approach more explicit. So in particular, those guys for trivial flat uh, connections uh, can be defined can be calculated or equivalently you can define them in a different way uh, via surgery. And this was done by Atsuki. So the corresponding series, also known as Atsuki series, and also there was a relevant work by Razansky who also considered 
And uh, so the way you compute it is actually, so suppose your, your, your manifold is given by some dense surgery, say for simply to on, on a node. So, and the statement that if you actually know first n color Jones polynomials, you can actually, uh, this, this allows you to, to, to produce first n guys here. And uh, another, another uh, nice case where you can uh, perform kind of explicit uh, kind of combinatorial calculation is that the case when those uh, guys uh, uh, correspond to a reducible flat, a reducible flat connection. So a reducible means uh, the stabilizer uh, with respect to SU2 conjugate action is uh, trivial. So if I take uh, a certain flat connection, which is uh, beta is uh, irreducible, so this can be, can be calculated in uh, terms of uh, triangulation of M3, and there is a, so the corresponding work is uh, by Dimofte, uh, Gukov, and uh, Zagir. Well, so first, is, 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 I mean, you can define those guys, and then there, and then you can formulate a stronger version of this like, uh, conjecture, simple exponential conjecture. That those are the same. Yes, yes, yes. Those, uh, also, you can show that uh, it's invariant. It's an invariant screen. Yeah, this is what is known as the Atsuki series in order. But like other one is known to be a variant of triangulation. Yes, I don't know. <laughs> I think yes. Okay. Okay. So, uh, but now, uh, good. Any other questions? Now we actually want to, uh, so it's not, uh, it's, it's has, it has been verified in many cases, but it's not, had, has not been proven. But actually we want to, uh, so we want to make a stronger, a, st a stronger conjecture. It's not just, uh, we, don't, we want, so we want to, to make something stronger, not just uh, say the relation, not just state some conjecture about the relation of these uh, uh, coefficients uh, to 